Hello everybody, it is Monday, July the 3rd, and welcome back to SFF 180. Uh, Thomas here, your host as always. It is time, of course, for the mailbag. I hope you guys have been having a lovely week, a lovely weekend. Been some holidays floating around this time, right? We've had Canada Day, 4th of July is coming up. So um, if you celebrate or have been celebrating any of those, hope you've been having a really good holiday. Uh, otherwise, what do I have in the way of announcements? Well, first off, got a whole slew of new subs in the last several days, or pretty much since the live show, BookTube SFF live show. So welcome to all of you new people. I'm happy to have you here. Mailbag Monday is the series I do every Monday where I take all of the review copies, all the parcels that I get each week from publishers, and uh, I open them right here on camera, uh, find out what's in them, we discover them together, and then you let me know which of these looks most interesting and exciting to you, and which you would like to most see me review, okay? Uh, otherwise, BookNet Fest. Coming up the weekend of September 1st and 2nd, I am confirmed as a panelist there. So go check them out at booknetfest.com, also on their Twitter, and they have an Instagram. Now, all of those are logically booknetfest. Uh, the Instagram thing they're doing kind of a fun thing with. The, um, every single weekend between now and the festival, they're having one of their guests, one of their speakers, take over the Instagram for the weekend and just post whatever bookish related photos uh, they're doing. And my weekend is scheduled to be August 12th through 13th, when I will be in Helsinki for Worldcon. So in addition to my tweets and all the recording that I'll be doing, I'm going to be taking over the BookNet Fest Instagram and I will be Instagramming you guys from Helsinki. So check that out and go ahead and follow them there. <laughs> All right, uh, eight packages this week, so it's a decent-sized average week. Looks like it's leaning very heavily towards tour book titles. So um, let's get into it, shall we? However, this first one here that we are starting with feels like a random penguin hardcover of some kind. Okay, this is The Savage Dawn. This is the final book uh, in the Girl at Midnight trilogy. The author is Melissa Gray. This is a YA trilogy. Uh, previous books were The Girl at Midnight, of course, and The Shadow Hour, and they have now sent me The Savage Dawn. And anyway, what, well, what can I say? It says that if you're a big fan of uh, Cassie Clare's City of Bones and Lainey Taylor's Daughter of Smoke and Bone, uh, then this will be a book for you, apparently. Uh, it's an exciting urban fantasy and romance trilogy. So if that's your cup of tea, uh, maybe you should check these out. I don't know if I want to say too much, about these in terms of uh, the synopsis here, so as to avoid spoilers for anyone who thinks they might want to read it. But as you got from the description, you should know whether or not this is uh, the kind of thing for you. But the final book, The Savage Dawn, is uh, arriving in stores on the 11th of July. Uh, next up, I have kind of a, a thin package from Prometheus Books from Pyre. And this is the third and final volume in a trilogy that has now arrived, and I've been dying to get into these, and so it's probably as good a time as any to uh, maybe think about adding them. But this is Raining Fire, and it's a post-apocalyptic adventure trilogy. Previous books were Falling Sky and Rising Tide. The author is Rajan Khanna. And uh, essentially it involves uh, airships, slavers, cannibalistic ferals, visceral action scenes. Um, gosh, again, so it's about an airship pilot, uh, in a post-apocalyptic setting, it says it has elements of a medical thriller. Hmm. As our heroes pit science against an engineered virus that leaves its victims feral beasts. And uh, this has been coming up from uh, Pyre Books, and uh, like I said, the, uh, this is now the final book in the trilogy, uh, which arrives on the 18th of July. So if you'd like to see me, uh, go ahead and get into this trilogy and review them all for you. Let me know in the comments. And moving on down the list, we are now confronted with a white envelope, which usually means, not always, but usually means it's a tour book. Huh, okay, well, this looks kind of interesting. Kind of a different sort of thing for tour. Uh, the author is Michael F. Haspel. The book's called Graveyard Shift, and it's uh, described as gritty urban fantasy and hard-boiled noir packed into a hand grenade of awesome. That's a, uh, that's a blurb uh, from another writer. That's not usually the sort of thing that uh, tour hasn't done much. Uh, when it comes to publishing urban fantasies. They've done a few, but it's mostly like the Penguin imprints, like Ace and Rock, that have really jumped on the, uh, the uh, urban fantasy wagon. Uh, but this one, 
A graveyard shift, it says, it's uh, a singular urban fantasy, here we go, meets noir, meets detective thriller. Uh, that's perfect for fans of Richard Cadry's Sandman Slim series and Daniel Jose Older's Bone Street Rumba. All right then. Graveyard Shift opens two years after the reveal, the global event when vampires came out of the darkness and made their existence public and introduces us to Alex and Marcus Miami Vice Cops. And Nocturne isn't a word that Alex, an immortal pharaoh turned police officer, that's kind of coming down in the world, uh, is particularly fond of. Since the reveal, the word vampire has become taboo, replaced with the euphemistic nocturne to help remove millennia of stigma. But after, hun but after hunting vampires for centuries, Alex knows it's nothing more than window dressing. Okay, so we're using uh, this, we're making commentary here on racial conflict, I guess, in America, through metaphor. Got it. If it weren't for the hemosynth, there'd have been no reveal. Vampires would still be covert ops. The work of Project Umbra, where Alex and Marcus hunted bloodsuckers for nearly a century before everyone started coming out of the coffin. Okay. That's a little on the nose, but I like it. But after a spate of incidents where vampires fall ill with blood frenzy after drinking poisoned hemosynth, the already tense relations between human and vampire deteriorate to the brink of anarchy. While Miami is falling to pieces, Alex and Marcus have to take extreme measures to bat battle an ancient vampire conspiracy, allying themselves with vigilantes and shapeshifters in an attempt to stave off the bloodiest race war their centuries-long lives have ever seen. Okay. I, I have always said that I detest vampire fiction, mainly because it's so cliché. And uh, it would really take something new and different and strange to make me interested in reading a, a story about vampires or with vampires. Um, I came across such a story last year with uh, Certain Dark Things, an amazing novel by Silvio Moreno-Garcia. And this sounds like it does a similar kind of thing, where like bringing it into... Um, a, a, a very violent uh, urban setting, but not in, not in a traditional sense, like, you know, really making commentary on culture. Um, sounds like it could be that kind of thing anyway, but um, I do not lack interest. Let's just say. Graveyard Shift arrives from Tor on July 18th. Let me know. And next up, also from Tor, and what I've been looking forward to, is a new book by Nancy Kress. This is called Tomorrow's Kin. It comes out on the 11th. Okay. And it's the first installment in a trilogy based on the Locus and Nebula award-winning story Yesterday's Kin. Uh, a well-wrought tale of first contact, it says. Okay. The aliens have arrived, and they've landed their embassy ship on a platform in New York Harbor, and will speak only with the United Nations. Their language is difficult, so they are speaking English. They say that their world is so different from Earth in terms of gravity and atmosphere, they cannot leave their ship. The population of Earth has erupted in fear and speculation. One day, Dr. Marianne Jenner, an obscure scientist working with the human genome, receives an invitation that she cannot refuse. The Secret Service arrives at her college to escort her to New York. She has been invited along with the Secretary General of the UN and a few other ambassadors to visit the alien embassy. The truth is about to be revealed. Earth's most elite scientists have ten months to prevent a disaster, and not everyone is willing to wait. I like Nancy Kress, generally, and I'm quite happy to see this. So let me know in the comments. This comes out, like I said, on the 11th. This next, oh boy, uh, this next one is one of these irritating big vacuum sealed packages from the Hatchet Group. And part of the reason I don't like those envelopes is they kind of tear the hell out of the books that are in them. But anyway, this is Buried Heart. This is the third and final installment in Kate Elliott's uh, New York Times best-selling Court of Fives series. Uh, it says, with prose as luxurious as its precursors, a world as intricate as it is imagined, and characters as vivid as they are intriguing. Okay, so, let's see. Again, what can I say about this? Well, it is it is a YA fantasy series. Uh, the previous volumes were Court of Fives and Poisoned Blade. Uh, Kirkus Reviews says it's a compelling look at racial and social identity wrapped in a page-turning adventure. Okay, then. Uh, so this comes out on July the 25th from uh, Little Brown Books for Young Readers, the conclusion to the Court of Fives trilogy, Buried Heart. And back to what is probably another Tor release. Oh, I was wrong this time. Okay, uh, this is, actually comes from Disney Hyperion. They've been starting to send me more and more stuff, so it's uh, uh, nice to be in touch with them, I guess. But this, this is a middle grade. Again, not usually the sort of thing I cover, but I know there are quite a lot of fans. Uh, this is a book called The Adventurer's Guild. The authors are Zach Lauren Clark and Nick Ilopoulos. And this comes out in, on October the 3rd. It says it's the launch of an epic new series. It follows best friends Zed Kagai and Brock Dunderfell, 
who, mu who get conscripted into the Dangerous Adventurers Guild and must defend what's left of humanity against terrible monsters. In one of the last cities standing after the world fell to monsters, inseparable Zed and Brock have high hopes for the future. Zed desperately wishes to join the ranks of the Mages Guild, where his status as Freestone's only half-elf might finally be an asset. Brock, the roguishly handsome son of merchants, is convinced, or confident, I should say, he'll be welcomed into the ranks of the Merchants Guild, but just as it seems the boys' dreams have come true, their lives take a startling turn and they find themselves members of the Perilous Adventurous Guild. And I assume that the Adventurous Guild sends them on adventures. All right then. Uh, okay, well, uh, middle grade fans, here you go. October the 3rd, Adventurers Guild, a new series beginning. And one more white envelope, so what shall we see? Okay, happy to have this. This is The Queen of Swords uh, by R.S. Belker. And uh, I believe this is the newest novel in uh, a universe. I don't think it's a direct sequel. Uh, but no, it's not. It's, I think it's a standalone book featuring uh, a character from earlier books set in this universe. One's called The Six-Gun Tarot and The Shotgun Arcana. Known for his weird westerns, a winning blend of steampunk westerns and horror, Belker revels in following the adventures of the peerless Maud Stapleton one of the most popular characters from those books that I just mentioned. Fans of pirates, dark fantasy, and kick-ass female heroines will like Wonder Woman. See, oh, that's a popular movie right now. I need to get that on my sell sheet. There we go. Wonder Woman. Yeah, That's how it works. Are sure to love this story of a woman who refuses to step down from a fight. Uh, her equally daring and her equally daring ancestor. Okay, in the Queen of Swords, Maud Stapleton embarks on a boldly imaginative globe-spanning adventure of her own. Uh, though it's a continuation to his popular series, The Queen of Swords is also the perfect book to join the world of Belker's Golgotha. That's the universe here. Okay, so Maud, late of Golgotha, Nevada, is a respectable widow raising a daughter on her own and also a direct descendant of the legendary female pirate Anne Bonny, as well as a member of an ancient order of assassins, the Daughters of Lilith. Leaving Golgotha in search of her daughter Constance, who has been taken from her, Maud must follow in the footsteps of her swashbuckling great-great-great-great-grandmother, uh, that was four greats, by the way. Pretty great. As she embarks on a perilous voyage that will ultimately lead her to a lost city of bones in the heart of Africa and the father of all monsters. Okay. Oh, and this one's already out. Came out June 27th. Okay, so uh, if you're fans, you can grab this right now from Tor Books The Queen of Swords by R.S. Belker. And that had a pretty sweet cover, I'm not going to lie. Okay, final one. That uh, feels like a big old hardcover from Random Penguin. Okay, then... Uh, this looks cute. I have to admit, the, this is Gork the Teenage Dragon. And you see he's doing the... Yeah. Ronnie James Dio. Let's see, this comes out on the 11th uh, by Gabe Hudson. It says it's a spellbinding love story filled with big-hearted humor and imagination. Okay. Uh, kitten, lots of buzz from, uh, like, the big review sites. Guys like Dave Eggers. Okay. Well, let's see what it has to say for itself. Gork isn't like the other dragons at War Wings Military Academy. He, is, he has a gigantic heart, two-inch horns, and an occasional problem with fainting. His nickname is Weak Sauce, and his will to power ranking is Snacklicious, the lowest in his class. But he's determined not to let any of this hold him back. Good boy, Gork. As he embarks on the most important day of his life, before his high school graduation, he must ask a female dragon to be his queen. Oh, that's a, that's a tough one. If she says yes, they'll go off to conquer a foreign planet together. If she says no, Gork becomes a slave. Oh, that escalated. Golly, poor Gork. Okay, vying with jocks, nerds, mutants, and multidimensioners to find his mate, Gork encounters an unforgettable cast of friends and foes, including Dr. Terrible, the mad scientist, Fribby, a robot dragon obsessed with death, and Metheldra, a healer specializing in acupuncture with swords. If you're going to do it, you know. But it is Gork's biggest perceived weakness, his huge heart, that will guide him through his epic quest and help him reach his ultimate destination, planet Earth. A love story, fantasy, and coming-of-age story, Gork the Teenage Dragon is a wildly comic, beautifully imagined, and deeply heartfelt debut novel that shows us just how human a dragon can be. Aww. Well, that's a, some very cute. Wow, huge tour announced for this as well. Uh, all right, so... Good old Gork, you can uh, follow his adventures and, you know, rock on on July the 11th. <laughs> well, that shouldn't seem so appealing, but it really does. Well, there you go. There you have it. That's this week's haul. Let me know in the comments which of these looks most interesting and exciting to you, which you would like to see me prioritize for review. And otherwise, if you enjoyed watching, please hit that like button, share the video far and wide with all of your friends. And above all, please sub. 
if you haven't already done so. That's how SFF 180 grows. As a channel, you can also support SFF 180 at its Tee Public store and at my Patreon, where all of the recruits into Wink's army get to enjoy little perks like seeing these mailbags and my other videos a day early, which is nice. So I want to thank all of you for being viewers, and until I see you next time, happy reading.